Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to add simulated details to our clothing in Maya by using NCloth. There are many instances where you want to add organic form without having to model, cut edges, push and pull vertices to get that natural form. That's where simulation comes in. So with that, let's get started. So here we are in Maya. We have our hammer boy here and we're going to be looking at simulating the shirt and the shorts on our character. The first thing that you need to do before you jump in and even apply an end cloth is to prepare your model. What I always recommend is to have clean geometry and have one sided geo. You can simulate with two sided or thickness, but I don't recommend doing that because what we can do is just simulate with one side and focus all of our efforts on this and then add thickness at the end. That'll save time and effort and troubleshooting down the road. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that you have an even distribution of edges. You want to avoid having really spaced out edges like this where you're not going to get good deformation. Because when it comes to simulation, it's based off of the geometry and topology and mesh density of your models. The next thing is make sure that your history is deleted. In order to do that, go to edit, delete by type history or in the poly modeling shelf, you can hit this icon right here, okay? And that'll make sure that your, your history is deleted. And the next thing that you wanna do is just double check your scale. You can see my grid is down here, and my character was modeled in centimeters, the default units inside of Maya, and to check that, you can go to settings, preferences, preferences, and we can take a look under settings here, and you can see that we're set to centimeters. Okay, so I'll just save and close that. And that is the default. So if you haven't changed anything, you're good to go. Now, you also wanna make sure that the size and scale is also correct. So he is modeled to be about four feet high. So that's what I'm using uh, when you see me changing some values. All right, now, once we've done all of that, we wanna go ahead now and actually subdivide our mesh, okay? We don't just want to subdivide this, or we don't want to simulate this, we need to subdivide it. And the reason why is because we need more density and we need more detail in our models to get those fabric folds and wrinkles. So I'll hold shift right click and I'll simply apply a smooth, okay? And here, actually I'll do that to both the shirt and the shorts. And what I want to do is make sure that my divisions is set to two. We're gonna get extra smooth. You can go up to three, but keep in mind as it gets denser, the simulation times will take a lot longer. So I'm for this simulation uh, example, I'm gonna just do two. I will go ahead and disable keep borders off, keep selection border off. So just in case you have any borders selected or anything like that, keep hard edge off. Um, and then that's pretty much all I'm gonna do as far as subdividing goes, great. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start the simulation process. So what I wanna do is select the shirt and the shorts, and then go ahead and actually change this to FX, this tab over here. Once we do that, you can see now we have our effects over here, and what we can do, our effects menu, is go to end cloth and then create end cloth. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit create end cloth and it goes ahead and applies it. What you're going to see if you don't have your outliner open, so you can hit this icon here on the left and you can see we have end cloth one and end cloth two. And if I hit control A, you can see that the end cloth shape two or end cloth two is assigned to the shorts and end cloth one is here. All right. Now, if your shirt became uh, or if your model lost material, just reassign the material. And I'm just going to do that with hold right click, assign uh, material. So if I go down here, assign existing, I just had this as clothes fabric, fabric blue. All right. So here we are with our shirt. And we can now start to take a look at our end cloth settings. So just to make sure that this applied properly, what I'd recommend is actually changing your workspace if you haven't already to Maya Classic. All right, and then I can go ahead and actually close this tab here. And I wanna take a look at our time slider here. So in order to simulate this, all you need to simply do is hit play on the time slider. 
and then there it goes it's starting to simulate so for sure we're good to go we can see that we have the clothing simulating so i'm going to go ahead and stop and then go back to the first frame all right so now that i have there is one setting that we need to change on our time slider here now i just went ahead and moved this to 120 frames just to give me time to simulate and if you hit the little icon in the bottom right here with the little guy running with the gear on his back that's animation preferences you need to make sure that you're set play set to playback speed play every frame so set that otherwise if you try to set it to 24 frames it's going to skip frames or whatever your default is here so hit save and then we're we're all set there so now it'll it'll make sure that it simulates and plays for every single frame of course, now we need to make sure that our clothing doesn't just fall right off the character. And we need to make sure that it's simulating on this character. Now, in order to do that, what we're gonna do is select our mesh. Make sure you don't have smooth preview on or anything like that. So just hit one on your keyboard. I'm gonna select our body of the character and I'm gonna subdivide that once. So I'm gonna go down here to smooth, shift right click, and one divisions is fine. So with the default settings, it's fine. It's only going to be used as a collider. So now that he's smoothed out, what we're going to do is jump to, again, back to effects here. And we're going to go to end cloth. And with our character selected, we're going to create passive collider. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and hit play and start the simulation. And there it goes. So it's starting to simulate and everything's looking good. But what we need to do now, as you can see, the the shorts are falling off. And if I let this simulate long enough, they're basically just going to fall right off of the character. So enough of that. We can see that that's falling right off. So we need to fix that. So now that we have the shirt kind of holding onto the character reference, we need to make sure that the shorts are pinned to this character. And we can use what's called a constraint. All right, so what I want to do now is hold shift right click on the shorts and we're going to select here and I'm just bouncing in x-ray. So if you see me bouncing back and forth, um, you can see that I have x-ray here uh, that I have just hotkey, okay, which is just a custom script. So I'm going to select the shorts here. I'm going to select probably three face loops. Then I'm going to hold control right click and I'm going to go to two vertices, two vertices. So with that, the vertices selected, I'm gonna pin that to the character. So I'm gonna hit my shortcut for X-ray, and then I'm gonna shift click the body, and we can see now we're gonna pin this together. So the way to do that is go to end constraint, and then we want to do point to surface. So if we do that, there we go. We did point to surface, and then now you can see that if you're looking in X-ray, or if you have this isolated, you can see, or the shirt hidden, I should say, you can see that it's pinned to the character, okay? Now, with that, let's go ahead and make sure things are simulating property, properly, and they are. So this is great. Right now we have kind of everything working correctly. Now what we need to do is actually start refining some settings. All right, so obviously this isn't looking really good. These are just the default settings, really baggy, not retaining its form. So let's jump into how to refine these settings. Now, once you get to this point, everything's kind of simulating and working well, I recommend caching, okay? So now if I go back and then scrub, look what happens. We lost our simulation. We lost all that simulation time. If you're not on a very powerful machine or even, you know, a, a mid-grade machine, well, you're going to lose that. So that's where caching helps. Now, you want to go to end cache, create new cache. So we're going to go to with our shirt and short selected, actually, go to end cache, create new cache, and then go to end object. Hit the dialog box. All right. So here we are here. And we're just going to call this cache name and cloth, you know, shirt. Or we can just call it short clothes, right? Whatever it is. Uh, clothes and then test, right? 
and we're going to just use the defaults. I typically just like to do one file. You can leave it default if you want. Uh, you can do even one file per object, but I'm going to do both of them together in one. And then you can cache using the time slider. So I have 120 frames here and you can hit uh, create. So now we can let that run. I'm going to let that cache out all the way. So let me pause real quick. Okay, and it's done. So we can kind of see what we have. Like I said, this is just the default values. And so now if I scrub through my time slider that I have it cached, boom, it's instant, right? It's now all loaded uh, and saved to Windows. And if I pull this over from my Windows File Explorer, you can see here are the two files. It's about 17 megs, nothing too crazy. So we can continue to refine and test this out to to get some better results so great so that covered caching to make it easier to review and uh, uh, not lose any work so now let's take a look at actually refining these settings okay so the first thing that i want to do is if you kind of go in here you can see that the space between these objects is quite a bit okay what what i want to do is actually have this simulate where it's much closer to the character's body so i'm going to hit Control a to go to my attribute editor with my character body selected. And since this is our collider, let's look at the thickness of this object. And what I wanna do is in collisions, go to solver display, change this to collision display, and there you go. So collision display shows the thickness that it's using for this simulation, and it's quite thick. So what I wanna do is actually lower this quite a bit, and you can do that right here in thickness. So notice that how, as how I bring that down, it starts to get to the original volume of the character. Now I'm not gonna go anything crazy small, but I will go about a 10th of what it was previously. Previously it was about 0.25. I'll set it to 0.025. Then I want to also do that to the, sh the shirt and it would help actually if I go ahead and rename this to shirt and cloth shirt and then and cloth shorts just so we can keep track of what we have. So with our shirt, we have collisions. We have the same thing. We have solver display here. And if you want to take a look at it, the collision thickness, you can see how thick that is. And this is a little bit easier to see. And the thickness isn't as thick, but again, we can set this to 0.025 or 0.035 just to get a little bit thicker, all right? So you can change this to whatever you want, but this will work for our needs here. And I will go ahead and change this to 0.035 for the shorts as well, all right? Now, I'll go ahead and select the shirt. And with the shirt selected, I'll go ahead and disable the collision thickness. And the solver display, just set that to off. And I'll do the same thing for the character body. All right, set that off. So now that we have that, what we want to do is go ahead and change the shirt settings. Okay. So with our shirt here, what we want to do is start running through these settings and just changing the main ones that I typically change. All right. Or I recommend changing. So we have end cloth shirt. What we want to do here is change the end cloth shirt self collision flag to vertex face. All that's gonna do is make sure that neither the face or the vertex collide with each other. So I'll do that for both the shirt and shorts because otherwise sometimes you'll get vertices that collide with each other and uh, or not faces or, or vice versa, you'll get fate, um, vertices colliding with each other. So this just makes sure that it, it tracks both the vertices and the faces for self collisions and don't intersect them okay so now that we have that we can go down to the actual settings so what we want to do is scroll down here in the attribute editor and expand dynamic properties so these are the actual properties for the clothing and you can see that we have stretch resistance compression compression resistance and quite a few other ones now i really mainly use stretch and compression and a couple ones down here so i really want to crank up the stretch uh compression like right now it's at 20 maybe we go ahead and set that to about 80 and we increase compression resistance to about 40 so that's going to stop it from doing this where it's really just kind of you know stretching um and looking very elasticy uh the other setting that i typically mess with is 
mass. So if you have a thicker fabric, so I would say like if you're doing silk, I would go down to maybe like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 in mass or maybe 0 0.8. And if you have something like denim, jeans and leather, you'd want to increase that to about two. So if this is kind of a cotton shirt fabric, I mean, you can probably keep it around mass one or maybe 1.2 and kind of play with values there. But the shorts I'd say is going to be a little bit bigger, maybe 1.5. Uh, a little bit heavier, I should say, uh, in the mass. Okay. Now, the other thing is, if you can see that we have this going on here, the gravity is really having a strong effect on this. And that's where you can modify and increase what's called damp. Okay. So the damp value, again, maybe if we set this to about 0.5, you know, nothing too crazy. It's going to make sure that it will still behave with uh, with gravity, but the gravity won't have as strong as a pull uh, on it. All right. So I went ahead and changed those values, um, which again were stretch resistance, compression resistance, and then mass and damp. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and re-simulate this out. And we want to do that by going to end cache, create new cache, and let's grab our dialog window and select our shirt, our shorts, and go ahead and hit uh, apply. So I'm gonna fully replace this because the other one was just kind of a garbage test. I don't wanna say garbage test, just a preliminary test to make sure everything was working. Uh, I also always recommend to make sure to change settings and simulate as you go, all right? So here's what we have so far. So it's still looking pretty, so I can hit escape actually. So if you don't want it to finish out, I, I know pretty much that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good here that I need to kind of do some simulating. So we can kind of see what's going on. Now, what we can do is continue to really increase the stretch resistance and compression resistance, okay? And we can see, oh, actually I didn't change that on the jeans, which makes sense. But I know for a fact the shirt, I definitely, it's getting better, I would say the shirt. So what I want to do is grab the shirt and I'm going to bump this up even more, 160 and maybe 80. And I'll do the same thing here. Uh, stretch resistance for the pants, maybe 160 and compression again, maybe 100. All right. So we have mass, all this stuff, everything else works fine. So I will go ahead and select that and we'll go ahead and recache and go ahead and apply and do a full replace. And let's just do a rename, okay? Or I would say probably just do an auto rename. So automatically rename it. And then now, here it goes. We can start to see, yeah, increasing the stretch resistance, compression resistance helps quite a bit and doesn't make it look too flimsy, all right? So I'll go ahead and hit escape and we can kind of take a look and review what we have here. Okay, and here's what we got. And again, I really want to change the settings a bit to make sure it retains at least some of the original form. That's why I like to use a setting called uh, mesh attract, input mesh attract. Now, I use these uh, pretty, pretty low. So maybe like 0 0.05 for the shirt, 0 0.05 for the shorts and what this is going to do is input mesh track make sure that it says hey i want you to simulate but also retain some of the original form of the character and depending on how high or strong this is like if you set it to one it's not going to simulate it'll just retain the original form all right so it's going to make sure to uh, keep some of the form as it's simulating so i'll go ahead and with those two selected, just go ahead and do a replace and do an auto rename, and we can let this go. Okay, so we're starting to get some more improvements. It is keeping some of the original form with mesh input attract. Um, the other thing that I wanna do is sometimes if you don't want to play with these settings, you can just use presets. So if I select the shirt, go to presets, you can see right here, we have t-shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a replace so again, presets is here in the attribute editor under presets, and then you go to t-shirt and then do a replace. And what that'll do, it'll modify the settings and give it a uh, kind of pre-made settings um, for whatever fabric or, or shirt. 
or object that you're trying to do. So here for shorts, we can do the same thing. I can go to presets. Now this one I'd say is going to be heavy denim. It's probably the closest thing. And then of course, we can always modify this um, however we see fit. Uh, the other thing is make sure I haven't messed with the nucleus. This is just the default settings here. These are like the global settings. So you definitely want to leave these uh, the same here with whenever using presets. All right. So I'll with the presets, I'll go ahead and do a new cache with the shirt and shorts selected. And I'll go ahead and apply replace auto rename. And I'm gonna let that run. Okay, there we go. So this is using a t-shirt preset. This is using heavy denim. And I'd say this is looking really good. I like what it's doing. It's not making it too saggy. Um, really, the big thing, you guys, was increasing this damp to about 0.8. So it was making sure before I was really pulling it down, the gravity was very strong on it. So this is looking good. I like the direction this is headed. You can, of course, change the settings that I showed you, maybe increase the stretch resistance a bit if you wanted to uh, and do what you need. But if you're happy with this overall, you can kind of see how it simulates and maintains uh, some of that, that nice form. We can go ahead and work with this, all right? So what I recommend is the last thing that you want to do if you're happy with the simulation is really crank up these solver iterations and solver attributes just to get a little bit more accurate um, simulation. So we can increase the sub steps. I basically just double these um, and then we can let this run. Now you do that in the nucleus, you go to solver attributes and crank this up. And that's just how many iterations and sub steps it calculates per frame in order to get a more accurate simulation. So I'll go ahead and select the shirt and shorts and create new cache and we'll go ahead and apply that and replace and then I'll do an auto rename. Let me let that run through real quick. Okay, there we go. So that went through it finished. It still took about a about a couple minutes um, at the higher detail and this is it simulated out. So we can see this is really nice subtle detail and it's not overtaking the shirt or the clothing. And I like where this is at. So what I typically do is I find the frame that I like the best. In this case, I just simulated it out to about 120 frames. I take the shirt and the shorts, and then I duplicate them, all right? So now if you go back to the first frame, I hit Control I, or sorry, Control one. There we go. Here's the shirt and the shorts and we can do whatever that we want all right and you can select these and i can go to poly modeling and delete history make sure everything's good and if you're done here i always recommend saving the simulation file and doing a save as or an increment save and then you can save out the file uh, in this case i'll just save it as 002 let that save out and we can just delete the end cloth out of the scene. Okay. And you can see I have this and I'll just go ahead and delete this and then I can bring back the original models. Okay. So here we're at, here we are and we can see how it looks like on the character. We're happy with this. Now what the next thing I always say is to take it even further, to take it to the next level is you can add even more detail to your model. So what I want to do by that is if you take a look down and I assume you're wearing clothing, you can see that you have seams on your shirt and your, your pants and, and all of that. So the, what I want to do now is go ahead and just select these edges that basically run about halfway through the mesh. And let's go ahead to our modeling toolkit. And I'll go ahead now and switch to modeling standard. Turn on our modeling toolkit and I'm going to turn on symmetry. And in this instance, yeah, the symmetry is probably not going to, well, maybe it'll work. Let's see what it does. We can do object X instead of world X. Yeah. Object X is what you're going to want to use since uh, world X, it may not be fully symmetrical, but we go ahead and now add these seams here. And I'm going to add one for the collar as well something like this. And what you can do is with this, you can hold shift right click and do a bevel edge. All right. And 
what I do is just hit Q and then uh, go to our channel box editor because I actually want to turn off fraction because here I want to make sure that we just turn off fraction and maybe use like a 0.25 um, but we want two segments okay so you want to make sure to keep track of where you just added that in this instance it was this so 0.25 what was is what was added and obviously you want to make sure that you have you know clean geometry for this and once you have that we can do another bevel so hold shift right click bevel edge and we're going to jump back and turn off fraction again and we're going to just type in a value since we use 0.25 we'll use you know something about half that or maybe 0.1 and two segments okay now what this gives me this is a technique that i use when i was modeling shoes and car parts and you know leather seats steering wheels and whatnot this is going to give us really really nice detail uh, that we can add into our model so if i now use a shift right click transform component we can move this on the normal so we're going to do this move that there maybe you know just just a bit like 0 0.025 negative 0 0.025 and then we can grab what's called you know these uh this part here for the seam and you have control over that in order to move that up and down so you can see I can bring this here, uh, pull that up, so I can hit G to repeat last. We can move this, and if you really want to get fancy, you can even add like little stitch trenches here. But I think this this works fine if you want to like bevel these. But I think we're good. And now if we take a look at it, you get this nice subtle seam that's just been added to your model, and we can use that to bake down on our characters. Uh, on our low poly so hold shift right click soften edge and then just do a soften edge okay so we got that there which is looking nice and we can do the same thing with the the shorts all right and we can even change like um, the objects colors materials but I think you get it all right um, one last thing is you can always don't shy away from sculpting so if you're like yeah I like this but you know what the you know some pieces here I want to remove some of these folds great grab your select your object grab go to the sculpting tab go to the sculpt brush now I'm gonna pop up my tool settings here and we'll dock it here and what we can do is lower the strength because if I go ahead and start to use this you can see it's pretty strong um, but I can set the strength to maybe about a fraction of that 0.25 and we can start to you know hold control to push in uh, and, and start to push that now it you can see it looks like I'm okay I don't have symmetry on I, I turned that off make sure your symmetry is off of course so you can kind of push and pull some things if you wanted to a uh, hold shift to kind of smooth it out as well um, so you don't lose or maybe there's a little bit too many wrinkles or some areas that you want to soften out you can have complete control uh, over that so we can just go ahead and really just kind of push pull uh, and move some things all right so you can definitely try that uh, that should help give you complete control but uh yeah so this is what i use to really give some good detail in your models so hopefully you found this helpful as always let me know if i uh, missed anything or if you have any recommendations or requests throw the comments down below uh, and appreciate any likes and subscribes you guys uh and helping this channel grow so as always i really appreciate uh you for watching. Thanks and take care.